Mm -hmm. um, so good evening, everyone. My name is Shannon Jeffries. I am an educational counselor at Prep Matters. Hi, everyone. I'm Patrice Arrington, and I am also an educational counselor at Prep Matters. Welcome to our um, the college essay, your chance to shine this evening. Yes, it's going to be so good. We've got so many good stories um, and things to share with you. Just a few housekeeping pieces. There is a Q&A box. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, please type them in. Um, Patrice and I are going to try to come to them at the end. We should have some time at the end of the webinar to answer your questions. Um, also here on the screen, you can see our email addresses. So please feel free to take those down and contact us after if you have any questions about um, essays and about what Prep Matters can do to support you um, and your students through this process. So we are going to jump right on in. So tonight we're here to talk about the college essay and demystify it just a little bit, right? So sometimes this is the piece that I find um, sometimes scares families the most. It's like, okay, so how important is this college essay piece? I keep hearing about it, but I'm not really sure, um, you know, just how important it is. And as you're thinking about all of these other pieces, virtual learning and maybe how your transcript looks from being out of school, um, not being able to be as involved in extracurricular activities due to school closures, or even, you know, what it's going to look like in the fall. Maybe you are a junior right now, and you'll be a rising senior, and you just have been a little bit behind in your college planning because you haven't been in the school building as frequently, right? So you might be thinking just how important is the college essay, especially these days? So there are a lot of questions among scholars or students and families um, among COVID-19 and just how important the college essay is going to remain. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about um, test optional and how the shift to test optional has impacted the importance of the college essay. Um, but I do think it's important that you all are here today and you're already thinking about what this is gonna, what role this is gonna play ultimately in the college application. So this is a really um, great slide that I think puts some things in context for students and families. So every year, um, NACAC or the National Association for College Admissions Counseling, they poll hundreds of colleges about the different parts of the college application, just how important they are, right? And so this is you know, something to take with all of the other information we're gonna give you today, right? It's not gonna be the same for every college to this degree. Um, but as you can see, there were about 220 colleges that were polled most important pieces being grades, right? The academic profile, grades in your courses, grades in those college prep courses. So APs, honors, IBs, the strength of your curriculum, how rigorous are your classes, your admissions test scores, if you took them, we know that with COVID that has shifted a little bit, right? But that still remained pretty important in the college application. And then you've got the essay or the writing sample right there beneath those things, right? So I think that really speaks to just how important this piece can be. What you're gonna find when you talk to colleges about what's most important to them, many of them will say that they do a holistic review. So what that means is that they're gonna be looking at more than just any singular part of the application. They really want a full picture of students. So they're gonna be looking at all of these different parts together in tandem. Something else I want to draw your attention to is demonstrated interest, which is right there beneath essay or writing sample. We'll talk a little bit later on today um, about the different essays that you will write the prompts, um, but demonstrated interest is something that colleges also track, many of them track. And the essay or writing sample is actually a way that you can illustrate to colleges how interested in them you are, right? Many of you have probably heard about the why us essay that you might have to write. Um, you know, why Stanford, why Duke? And that's a way that you can actually demonstrate interest um, through your writing. So the essays are really important in the process. And we wanna make sure that tonight we kind of give you a little bit more of a sense of how you can do that effectively for your application. So again, going back to these different parts of the college application, right? You've got right there in the middle, grades, rigor and test scores. So the academic profile still remaining a really important part of the college application. But then you've got these other pieces on the outside, right? And so something to note for our um, you know, families and students that are on this call, the college application is also increasing in importance or college essay is increasing in importance um, as 
academic profiles look similar among high achieving students, right? So you are probably on here as someone who has worked really hard in high school, and I'm hoping that your grades reflect that, right? Um, and there are also thousands of other students who have also worked really hard in high school, and maybe those transcripts start to look a little similar. The essay is another opportunity for you to kind of stand out in that group of students. Um, and so it just, again, goes back to why the essay is important in addition to that strong academic profile. And it allows you to speak directly to the admissions office, right? There's this interesting piece sometimes that um, saddens me a bit as a writer and as an essay specialist at Prep Matters where families and students feel um, you know, like a little like disempowered in the college process, like the college process is something that's going to happen to them that they don't have an active role in it. Um, it's like, you know, they're just going to pick me or not right but the thing about the essay is that this is a place where you can take your power back. You own this right it allows you to highlight your strengths really allow that voice and that authenticity to come through. You get to showcase your writing skills and if you're not the strongest writer you get to work on that through this process share your perspective on the world, talk about your background, give a little glimpse of your personality and also describe something that you consider to be meaningful. So this is really a place where you get to shine and own this part of the process, um, which I think is exciting when it's considered that way, right? And not so much a box you have to check or a burden or something that's gonna stress you out, right? It's really a place for you to shine and uh, show that authenticity. So take a deep breath. A couple of things are true. The college essay matters, it's really important. And you're gonna have to write a lot of them, okay? So beyond the Common App, you have to write some supplemental essays and Patrice will talk about those in a few slides, right? But keep in mind that you are the narrator of your own story. Nobody knows you better than you and you get to use the college essay as a place to do that. And also colleges are really interested in knowing you too, right? They really are interested in knowing who you are beyond the transcript in the test score. I know that that becomes, you know, the most important part of a lot of the conversations around college admissions, but the college essay is really a place for them to get a sense of who you are holistically. And things that you want to think about is how do you choose your, how do you spend your time? How do you choose to spend your time? What's really important to you? Are there pivotal um, experiences or moments in your life that you could really talk about and how you grew through those? What have you done over the past few years that's significant and important to you? So we don't want you to fret. Um, today, we're gonna really hope that you walk away um, with next steps and some supports to get you on the path to rocking this process. And brainstorming. Okay, so a few notes about brainstorming. You're in a, a really great period of time. You're in the summer. This is a really great time to brainstorm about what you could write about for the college essay. So something that a lot of students will do, they'll journal, right? They'll kind of think about documenting their lives, taking kind of a, a snapshot of things that they've done in the past. You know, maybe you go through family photo albums. Maybe you talk to your parents about their background, you talk to your grandparents about their interests or where, you know, where they've come from, what they've gone through, right? You really get a sense. You get to take kind of a stock of what's going on in your life. And this is a good time to do that in the summer as you're reflecting and spending some time away from school. And something that's also really important about brainstorming is that a lot of you might have ideas for what you want to write your college essay about. You might have an idea immediately. That's good. Write that down and keep coming up with ideas, right? So don't jump on the first one that sticks because that might not actually end up being the best one for your application. So come up with a lot of different ideas this summer um, and we you know, are happy to help you facilitate that process um, if you're interested in working with us. All right, I'm gonna pass it over to Patrice to talk about essay prompts and why they don't matter. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So the essay prompts. So at this point in time, of course, whatever application platform that you're going to be using, the app, the actual essay prompts are available for you. So most of us are using the Common App or the Coalition App or applying directly to the institutions. So we're going to go over what the um, Common App essay prompts are for, for 21-22. Um, so we can kind of figure out there's a new one in there. Um, normally, there are six prompts. Um, and with the last one being the one you can write about anything. 
So there is a new prompt this year and it's prompt number four. I'm not gonna read them all because I'm sure that you guys are already well-versed on the prompts since they haven't really changed since 2017. <laughs> and they've added this new um, prompt number four. And it says, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking and what was the outcome? So this prompt is really for gratitude, is more reflective than the other question that was in there before, which wanted to be a little, was a little bit more scientific. Um, so we want you to, to not do too much thinking or on that one thing, but elaborate um, what was done or what the person that did it for you, um, what they brought to the, to the picture. Um, your essay should mainly be about you and how the event impacted your life. Um, the thing that made you happy should not just be a feel good story. It should have a major impact on your life. So you can choose any of these, these essay prompts. The most popular one, um, there was a survey that was done. Um, the most popular one of the last over the years has always been, you know, prompt number seven, because that's the one where you can share an essay on any topic of your choice. And it could be just something you've already written and one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. So a lot of students feel like this is the best way for them to shine, um, talk about themselves, tell a story, whatever it is. And you may not fit into the other prompts that are, are there. So whatever you choose in this Common App essay prompt, make sure you're speaking to the question. A lot of students kind of shy away from what is asked of you. And that's a definite no-no um, for the college admissions that are reading that, that essay. So you wanna make sure you're answering these questions to a T. Um, the second most popular one is um, question number five, was you're discussing an accomplishment or event or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. And the third most popular one is actually the number two, which is the lessons we take from obstacles that we encounter that can be fundamental to later success. The kind of time that you face a challenge, setback or failure, how did it affect you and what did you learn from the experiences? Again, it doesn't matter which essay prompt that you select, but making sure it is more than just well-written, but it's a reflection of you, your character, your personality, because this is an opportunity for you to shine in this application. A lot of colleges don't do interviews. They can't see you face to face. You may not have an opportunity to go and sit down with the admissions rep. So this is a way for you to cut, like for your character to come out. And for some, an admissions person that is reading your essay is like, wow, that student really belongs on our campus. Let's choose him or her. So making sure you guys are really, it's more than just grammar, sentence structure, punctuation. It's really about telling, letting an, an admissions rep who's reading see you. And I know it's very difficult for us to talk about ourselves. Like it's, you know, I don't want to say too much. Or I don't want to seem like I'm bragging, but this is the time to shine, show your accomplishments, let someone who's reading your story really feel deeply about you as a person, because you have to fit within the community of the college. It's not just about grades or about, you know, you know, how great the school is on, you know, on charts. It's really about you thriving over the next four years of your life and finding that fit. So that, that essay is you want to be, a, the, the college person that's reading it wants to say, hey, that student can be a part of our mission, a part of our community. They're going to do something when they get here on our campus. That, so that's what they need to see in that, that essay. Um, this just again, the coalition app has essay prompts also. There's only, there's four prompts and I always call it the ones that are actually about something, the prompts, and then the one that's your choice, the additional. So there's four prompts that you can choose from, but five essays basically that you can then write. So this is the last one is submit an essay on a topic of your choice. Um, not as many as the, the common app, but again, they're around the same thing, telling a story from your life or describe a time that was meaningful to you? Um, has there been a time where you had a long cherished 
for a type of belief challenge? How did you respond? And like a lot of times students, when you see these three part question, like for example, in number three, there's three questions to be answered there. A lot of times students just answer the first one and then go on a tangent about that first part of the question. You really have to answer all three questions that are in that prompt. So making sure you guys are paying attention to what is being asked of you and whatever application that you are um, deciding to apply to college in. My, <laughs> my slides are moving a little slow. Um, so in addition to your, your basic essay prompts, there's always some kind of supplemental essay um, from the school. So this is the way the school can figure out that demonstrated interest that Shannon was talking about, you answer the, the questions are derived from the universities themselves. So it kind of gives you an idea or a way that you can like, okay, I've done my research on this school. This school is really where I want to go. I've got to shine through and let them know that no matter what, I'm 100% going to go to this institution. So some examples or samples of um, some of the supplemental essays that you will see is like, it's 2040 what's your headline? Like that was from Elon University. Like how would you answer that question? And Elon's gonna look in depth of how in 2040, what are you doing? Like, what does that headline say? Does it say we are all flying? Does it say, you know, we're hovering above the earth or whatever it is, but Elon wants to see how you answer that question. They're not looking for something specific. They're looking for how you answered it, right? And then you've got the Hawaiian word moelo is often translated as story, but it can also refer to history, and genealogy, and tradition. Use one of these translations to introduce yourself. That's a Dartmouth College question. <laughs> so how would you answer that <laughs> and do it well and really pick one of those um, traditions or translations to introduce yourself? And you have to be funny. If you're funny, be funny. If you're artistic, be artistic. Draw on yourself and make sure that your character is coming through in these type of questions. Define an unpopular opinion you hold. That's Notre Dame. Describe an extracurricular activity or intellectual pursuit. What do you want to study? What's your major? And then the always interesting one that happens a lot is why are you interested in attending blank college or university? And in that why question, no other college can fit within that why question. So making sure it goes beyond you have a great business program or engineering program, you really have to do your research on the institution to see they know that they're ranked number two in business or number one in engineering. They already know that. Tell them something that is not obvious or you didn't just find in the top Google section when you Googled you know, Brown University or North Carolina a and or whatever your college choice is. So making sure that that college that you are saying, why do I wanna go there? It's how this college is gonna help you thrive over the next four years, help you develop and mature into the young man or young woman that you're gonna be and help you be a better citizen once you leave those, those walls of that institution. That's the, 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 how you have to answer that question. Okay, so new, of course, a common app um, is our COVID-19 question. And community disruptions such as COVID-19 and natural disasters can have a deep and long lasting impact on you. If you need it, this is space for you to describe those impacts. Colleges care about the efforts on your health and well-being, safety, family circumstances, future plans, and education, including access to reliable technology and quiet study spaces. So if you wish to share anything that impacted you during COVID-19, the Common App has a 250 word limited um, section where you can add that. It was this year, a year and a half has been extremely trying um, for you guys, especially with mental health and everything. So it's hard to sit on a computer on Zoom and do your work and have as much motivation to do it. And some of your grades may be a reflection of that. So talk about how that affected you. And that's okay to do. That question is there for a reason. So if it had a mental health uh, impact on you, if it 
whatever it, it was, it's like, if you didn't have a quiet space to have school, which happens a lot, that's okay. Talk about that. And they want to hear that because they want to know if you started off being an AB student and then during COVID, you got the B minuses and Cs and maybe some Ds, I don't know. They want to know what happened because clearly that's not what kind of student you are. So tell them what happened. This is that place to tell and don't think, oh, I don't want to seem like, you know, I'm making excuses for why I have these grades. It's not an excuse if you were drastically affected by COVID-19. We all were in some way. And this is your time to be able to do that. Um, next slide that's not coming up. <laughs> So this is also a place that additional quest, that additional information section is another way to um, have more context for the students, right? So many schools made significant adjustments to their grading policies. I, I mean, I know um, I used to work at Wilson High School and we made adjustments to our grading policy. So I'm sure a lot of schools have done that. If you wish to share that information um, to and regarding your high school, or if even if you are applying to another university, um, you can do that here in that section. And this is where you're gonna add additional context, um, not necessarily talking about how code affected you, but maybe the reasons why, like, you know, I only got a pass fail. I wasn't offered grades. Like across the country, the transcripts are gonna be looked at in so many different ways. Every school across the country did something different um, for COVID-19. So if your school did that, this is a way to say, hey, I did really well in this class. I seriously enjoyed it, but I only got a P because that's all they were given this year. So technically in a regular times, I would have an A, but you know, this is a way to add that additional information to, um, to your application. And then another one is for counselors as well. So as a counselor, I was a director of college counseling. So as a counselor, this is my section as well to add any of that additional context um, about the school, the um, if it ended early, if we went to a four by four block instead of a year long, you know, classes, if students were required to take a course on pass fail, if um, grades from the spring didn't weren't even included in the GPA or class rank, these are things that uh, as a counselor where I can add or not be um, your counselors can add additional information that's extremely helpful to the colleges that you guys are applying to. Engage the writing process. So as students and millennials, you guys are the biggest procrastinators. <laughs> so you gotta budget your time. This it's not this essay should not be written overnight. It is not a homework assignment that you can just do some stuff and turn it into your teacher the next day. If you want a very well-written, thoughtful essay that is going to engage the college admission officers that are reading it, you've got to budget your time. You have to prepare multiple drafts. Again, you just can't write it overnight and say, all right, I've written it. This is my draft. Edit it. Here you go. You're going to change several times about try to figure out what is the best way to flow what you're thinking, right? You wanna highlight your strengths. You're gonna go through this draft and make sure that all of your strengths in this essay are highlighted and it's okay to do that. Again, you can brag about yourself. You can talk about the things that you have done. It is okay to put those in the forefront. Choose your theme. You know, your it should have a, a, a one theme and talk about that. It shouldn't have 50 different things going on where the, the, the person that's reading is jumping all over the place to try to figure out what it is you're trying to say. Develop your voice. This should not be your parents' voice, your friend next door's voice. This is your voice. It shouldn't we, if you don't use these big words that you looked up in the dictionary, don't use them now. Put your voice in your essay so it is from you. Edit and rewrite. This will take time and again will require several drafts. You're going to edit it. You're going to change your mind. You're going to have you know a person to, to review it. They're going to give you, you know, cross off things and give it back to you. And it's going to go on for a while. So make sure you guys are giving yourself plenty of time to do that. It is also important to have clarity and brevity and know the prompt and the word count. So some students, for one thing, this is the common app will not allow you to submit it if it's over 650 words, but other, other places may allow the submission, but you don't wanna go over that. That's put there 
for a reason. And if you go over your word count, the missions council is gonna look at that as like, you don't know how to follow instructions. So making sure that you are following the prompt, answering that question, and not saying more than you have to. You have to, it's almost like doing a pitch, a two minute pitch. You have two minutes to get that in. You can't go for five minutes. So thinking about that when you're writing the words and knowing how much, um, how many words you can have. Proofread, proofread, and proofread again. You have got to not make mistakes. A very well-written essay goes a long way. If you have a lot of mistakes, it doesn't look good in the admissions office. I think Shannon, it goes back to you. <laughs> All right, so again, thank you so much, Patrice, for going through those prompts, right? So we wanna you know, just kind of get back to, to also thinking about the essay and kind of where it fits in the bigger picture, right? So this essay is a place where you can share your vision, right, for yourself and for your college years. And you're giving the admissions reps and office a hint of who you are when you get to campus to help them figure out how you're going to contribute to their community. So something that I always hear from students is like, you know, well, what does a college want me to say? I get that all the time, every year. Well, what, what, what should I say? It's like, well, what do you want to say? No, but what should I say, right? So I know that's important, that's on your mind. No, really though, what do college admissions reps want to know and what do they wanna see? So ultimately, right, the goal of a college admissions office or a rep, right, is to help craft a class. They are trying to build a new cohort of students who will be joining their community, right? And they want you to graduate. <laughs> Ultimately, when they're looking at this, they are looking for key characteristics. Is this going to be a student who's going to graduate on time and do it while feeling happy and contributing positively to our environment? Okay, so I know that that's still not, that's a non-answer for many of you. <laughs> it's like, still not giving me what I'm asking for, right? Give me the formula, Shannon. What do they want? This is what they want. They want to bring in students who are going to graduate on time and have a great time while they're there while contributing to the rich community that they're joining. Okay. And so we want to help colleges meet their goals. And in doing that, we submit a really compelling application that includes a really strong essay. Okay. So they're looking for college ready students. So as Patrice said, proofread, proofread. I used to work in college admissions for a few years and one of the saddest things that I would experience as I was reviewing applications is when I, was, I would come across an essay that was clearly not seen by anyone else, right? No structure, no editing, just text, right? And in some instances, the essay came down to the essay. Maybe that student was very similar to another student. We kept going back to that essay to see like, okay, what, what can the student really bring? But it's a missed opportunity if it's not written well unfortunately, okay? And I always say, don't give colleges a reason not to admit you, right? They're looking for a reason to admit you. So if you give them an essay that hasn't been edited, it's not sophisticated or at least well thought out, right? It's just like slapped into the essay or application and submit it. Colleges can discern that. They know when this is something that was thoughtless, right? They can really get that feeling. And is that really the first impression that you wanna make? Right. So as you're saying, well, what do colleges really want? They want a strong first impression. OK. And so having a strong essay is going to be part of that. Right. Showing that you have some self-awareness. You're reflective. <laughs> That's a huge part of the college essay is some reflection. Um, you're thinking analytically about your world and pulling together maybe ideas that just don't seem to go together. You're able to kind of do that. And as they're crafting a cohort or bringing in that new class, they want to think about who's going to be you know, the most uh, productive on campus, who's really going to come in and help us uh, develop a rich experience for other students. So they're also thinking about, you know, what you're bringing. Are you someone who's able to show collaboration through your essay? Are you someone who's able to show sort of, you know, a collective mindset and, and a desire to serve others? Are you also someone who's coming in with a strong sense of identity and, and personality, right? So maybe it isn't collaboration, but you're very clearly somebody who has an interesting personality and great thoughts and ideas, right? Are you likable? Are you authentic in that essay? They're also just thinking about, are you gonna be somebody who's gonna contribute positively to campus? So ultimately that's what it boils down to. Your transcript, your test scores, that shows that you can do the work. The essay is the other part, right? Um, Patrice mentioned fit earlier. This is a place 
where that really comes out, right? Your college essay, is this student gonna fit this environment, right? And I don't want you to focus too much on that because ultimately you are who you are, but that is what they're gonna be looking for in the college essay. So a few tips on what you can do, all right? The first one, you're already doing it. It is July 8th and you are here on a Zoom at 7.31 PM, OK? This is dedication. If this is summer vacation, you're planning ahead. Some of you might already, you might be sophomores on this call, right? I'm, I'm guessing many of you are rising seniors, but some of you may be sophomores already thinking about this. So even for my rising seniors, you just finished your junior year, this is a great time to begin working on that college essay. Something that, unfortunately, a lot of seniors like underestimate is the amount of time the college essay is going to take, OK? When you get into the fall, you might be in band. You might be playing varsity athletics again. You are actually trying to finish all these applications and visit schools and retake the SAT and the ACT. The college essay ends up being something you rush to do on October 29th, right? Because in July, you thought, I've got all the time in the world. Unfortunately, that is not true. We are already running out of time, right? So this is a great time for you to begin thinking about this process. As I mentioned earlier, it's bigger than just the, co the Common App essay or the Coalition essay, because you've got all those supplemental essays that Patrice mentioned. And the titles of those, the, the prompts seem really cool. I love supplemental essays, but do you know how long those things take to write? Even if they're just 300 words, it's because they are so creative. <laughs> And so it takes a little bit more. It takes a lot of drafting and thinking through different ideas. So planning ahead is so, so important. So we're happy to have you here tonight because we're getting you on that path. Embrace the mess, okay? Embrace the mess. Um, as a writer myself, I know that writing is iterative. Like the first thing that I put down on paper is not going to be the thing that I submit. That's why we encourage you to start early. Um, Last year, as an essay specialist of Prep Matters, the essays transformed from the first time I got them in July to September, right? We took so much time thinking about each line, thinking about flow, thinking about, is this the best topic for you? Is this the most authentic for you? And it can be messy, right? Writing can be so messy. You know, the first time you might submit your essay to a Prep Matters essay specialist, you get it back and it's all marked up, right? There's red everywhere. It's bolded in certain places. It looks really messy, but by the time it's done, it's been refined. It's been questioned and challenged and stretched to become the best piece of writing, right? So in the beginning, I always tell my students, you're gonna get a lot of red on this and please don't stress out about it, right? Because this is ultimately going to make it better. Embrace the mess. Okay, I promise it's all part of the process. Even if you feel super lost in it, you're on track. Choose your editors wisely. So this is a really big one, okay? Because a lot of times students wanna share their essay with everybody, every friend, every teacher, every counselor they've ever had. Um, and I understand why, right? You, you want feedback, you're hungry for that. You want that kind of feedback from people who know you. And you want to feel like, you know, you're affirmed in what you've written. You want to get that validation from them. But you want to be careful here. So this entire night, we've talked a lot about voice and how, how authentic, you know, the college essay should be. When there are too many editors, you end up getting a lot of different voices in the essay. And eventually, it's no longer yours, okay? That's one of the first things. One of the other things is that you know, you might start to get a lot of feedback from other people and you might start to feel a little insecure about what you've written or just unsure about it, right? So you start to question yourself. You came in really confident about your topic and your direction and then your counselor said this, but then your English teacher said this. And so now there's all these conflicting opinions about ultimately what you wanted to write and what your story was going to be, okay? And you wanna stay true to you. So part of this goes with the editors, right? When you're picking your editors, you wanna pick someone who knows you really well, like maybe a family member um, or uh, you know, a, a coach who you've known for a number of years. And then you want someone who knows college really well and kind of look at that essay and get a sense of what role it's gonna play in your application and how colleges will receive it. Those two people, great options for editors. And then ultimately you wanna stay true to you. So when you get that feedback from them, take it, listen to it, right? 
but ultimately run it through this lens of, is this gonna be the most authentic, genuine essay that I can write? This is gonna be the piece that colleges wanna see and colleges are looking for in your application. And what to avoid from Patrice. <laughs> So funny because there's a slight delay in the PowerPoint. That's awesome. So, and what to avoid? <laughs> so now that we're speaking about, you know, making this compelling essay and choosing a prompt wisely, we want to also know what to avoid when we're writing our essay. So, um, next slide. As you hear my dog in the background. So we're going to avoid overused topics. Death of a grandparent, a sports injury, service abroad, and making the championship team, celebrating the mundane, divorce of parents, or coping with learning differences. So those are all great. And I know we all have some kind of story related to them, but we probably want to focus a little bit more on the I'm sorry, on the everyday moments that can have lasting impact on a person. If one of these is that great, but these are topics that every student across the country are using, right? I'm in sports, you know, I've had injuries and it's been great to like overcome that obstacle and, you know, jump back out on the corner on the field and how it's made you, you know, a better person or your character or your resilience or whatever it is. But again, those little everyday moments can have more of a lasting impact and would be a, more helpful in that, that essay than choosing something that everybody is, is going to use. So we want to avoid Focusing on childhood. I've had some students in the past come to me with a story of their kindergarten paper that they wrote um, that their teacher gave them the best grade in the elementary school. It was posted on, you know, whatever board they had and it was great. Um, I think you have developed a lot since kindergarten. <laughs> So we want to avoid using things like in the childhood, in kindergarten, my sixth grade paper, my, unless you're at NIH and something's being published or done in that way that you did in seventh or eighth grade, uh, let's avoid that topic, right? They want to know about you now. Uh, you have matured over those years and grown into the young man or young woman. That you, that you are. They want to know that person. They want to know how that person is going to thrive on that campus. They want to know the personality of the 17, 18 year old, not the 11 or 12 year old. So let's avoid focusing on childhood um, essay topics. <laughs> Spotlighting someone else. So we've had, you know, essays. I've had students come to me about, you know, a, a really great person in their life or grandparent or somebody that's done something great, whether it's military or whatever it is, that's great and that's awesome. But you are telling an admissions rep about that person, not about you. So the highlight should come from something that you have accomplished in your years, not a grandparent, a friend, a family member, a parent, that's about them. So leave all of that excess stuff behind and focus on you, the highlight and the strength of your essay and your display of leadership, responsibility, patience, time management, all of that focus should be on you, not the leadership of somebody else. So we're going to avoid spotlighting them. I like to hum. Avoid ranting. Um, ranting it seems angry, like you're going off on a rant, on a tangent, and just you keep perseverating on a certain thing. Let's avoid the, the ranting of topics. Again, if that's not, that's not your character, you don't want to display anything that's negative or anything that you are like, I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. Like we don't want, as the, the pictures are great illustrations of what could come out in that essay or in, like portrayed, even though it's not meant to be that way, you have to think about your audience. And, and who's reading it. So uh, like, you don't want them to draw a conclusion of 
this person is crazy. Like they keep ranting about something <laughs> and it may not fit into, you know, schools aren't big on certain things or certain topics or certain views or whatever the case it is. So if you're choosing a school, you're writing for a particular school, we're not going to go on a tangent or ranting about certain topics. Let's stick to your personality, your strengths, your leadership, your accomplishments and things that you have done in your life, not ranting about a particular topic. All right, thank you. So I'm jumping in here with a five paragraph essay. All right, so if you're on this call, I know you can write an amazing five paragraph essay that includes parents, right? Because the five paragraph essay is just, it is, it is part of our schooling in the United States, right? It's just something that you learn how to do really well. And so sometimes we find that students will approach the college essay the same way. And for many of you, your college essay will end up being an assignment as a junior, right? So you will be submitting this to your English teacher and most of the year, you're writing five paragraph essays in English. And so it could be hard to switch that off. But the thing that's really great, um, our director, Katie Dunn, does this great thing with the difference between the five paragraph essay and the college essay, right? So in the five paragraph essay, you do all of your, your, your explaining, you talk about your thesis, you've got your different paragraphs, and then you get to the reflection at the end. It's the heart of it. The reflection's always so, so good. Even me, when I used to read research papers, I would love to get to the bottom. Like, give me the good stuff. The college essay, you want the good stuff at the beginning, right? And why do you want it at the beginning? It's because colleges are reading hundreds of essays, hundreds of essays. And so they want to be, I, I don't love using the hook term because we'll talk about gimmicks in a little bit, but colleges do want to hook. They want to be hooked at the beginning, right? And they want to keep reading. So sometimes I'll find that students will be compelled to do a ton of storytelling at the beginning and then get to the point at the bottom, right? But if a college admissions rep has three minutes to get through that application, to get to that essay and make a decision, right? They want a reason to keep reading. So give them that reason at the beginning of the essay, right? So you really wanna draw them in to the essay at the beginning. And that's the distinction between the college essay and the five paragraph essay. You want to avoid reading your friends' essays, okay? And so this goes back to editors earlier in staying true to you. There is going to be maybe an unspoken feeling of competition maybe among your friends. Maybe for the first time for my rising seniors on the call, you know, you might get to a place where you and your friends kind of have a weird vibe going. It's like your lists look a little similar. He or she's asking you, you know, well, how are you approaching this supplemental essay? What are you going to talk about? And maybe you feel compelled to share or you feel compelled to read their essays, right? But as we mentioned earlier, editors, picking your editor is very, very important. Um, you don't want to you know, get a sense that your essay is not good enough by reading a friend's essay. Or what I've also seen happen is that someone will read their friend's essay um, and maybe that person has a, a particular voice or way of writing then you feel like you then have to write the same way as them. Maybe that person's funny. And so you feel like you need to be funny in your essay. Or maybe they, you know, they have this very strong identity that they attach to. So you want to write about identity for you. But maybe that's not actually true to you, right? So the next one actually, the next slide goes with this, right? It's the same thing, letting your friends read yours, right? You might feel like that's going to be important in the cafeteria this fall, right? So if I could just say cut down on the noise and find a way to slide out of that conversation when all of your friends are like, well, we're gonna show essays and we're gonna share it. It's so easy on Google Docs now, right? For everyone to share things with each other. Try to keep this sacred to you as you go through this process. Because as I mentioned earlier, it can be messy. It can be iterative. And so you don't wanna share something when it's too young or too early in your writing process and get derailed by someone else's opinion. Your friends likely mean well, but they're also under a lot of pressure for themselves too. And so you just don't want to get into a weird uh, position sharing essays and reading essays of your friends while you're still working on yours. Try to keep your voice as clear as possible through this process. And then avoiding gimmicks, okay? So you may think, you know what, Shannon, I really want to write my essay in the form of a recipe. And 
that might seem cool right now, right? That really might seem cool. But then when it lands on the desk of an admissions rep, they'll be like, what is this? And so something that Katie also says, which I think is so great about this, is that students become more committed to the gimmick than to the essay itself, right? So you're like, nope, I am committed to writing this in two different languages, right? So you get so committed to that being the, the format of the essay that you miss the heart of it and the purpose of it, okay? So ultimately, you do wanna be creative, but you don't wanna to try to get too clever that you lose sight of what the purpose of the college essay actually is, okay? So make sure if you're thinking about a gimmicky way of doing this, you run it by somebody, okay, before you do it. You know, colleges love to get cool things. I, I remember some of my favorite essays being essays where students used a different language or used a little bit of dialogue and kind of broke up the essay and made it interesting, but there was a way that they did it where I still walked away having a sense of who this student was and that they put a lot of thought into what they were trying to, to show the college, okay? So just make sure you're being careful when you're thinking about any little tweaks to the essay. So the biggest ideas, right? Remember the essay's role in your application, right? And remember what colleges are looking to see. They want you to graduate on time and be happy while doing it. They're looking for a class, right? A cohort of young people who are gonna come and transform their campus and each other's lives, okay? So that's what they're looking for. That's the point of this essay for that holistic piece, right? They're looking for more than just your grades. They wanna know who you are and how you're gonna to contribute to their campus and their space. Select your trusted advisors, okay? It's really important that you're thinking about who you're sharing this essay with. Like I said, we wanna share it with our friends. We get really excited about what we're writing and what we're doing, but protect it, protect it in the process. Keep that bigger picture in perspective, right? Ultimately, this is part of an application, but it's not the end all be all. The college essay is great. It's part of all those other things that you've done, your extracurricular activities, the way you were you know, working really hard in the classroom, really hard during virtual learning, all of that is part of a bigger package. And then finally, authenticity and genuineness is so important and you'd be surprised how clear it is when you're not being authentic in the college essay, right? So just really being like, who I am is pretty cool and I can write about that in the college essay. And that's that, right? I don't want you to feel like you have to come in with some big story or some big gimmick, right? Who you are is enough and we'll find a way to do that in your college essay. So if you wanna learn more about how we do that here at Prep Matters, you can actually just sign up for a complimentary meet and greet with one of our essay specialists. They'll talk about what we do and how we can help you craft a really strong essay. And Patricia, you're gonna add something. Yes. Um, I want to say, as you guys are going through this process, again, um, your questions that you should ask yourself is like, who am I? Why am I here? What's unique about me? and what matters to me, right? So those should be answered in those, those essays so they get the real authentic you. You can also write about um, unique extracurricular activities or passions, activities or interests that contrast heavily with your profile. There's some of us that do stuff outside of the classroom that nobody else knows and that's something that speaks to your character and your passion, then you can write about that. Using our everyday experiences as an object or as a metaphor to explore our life, um, you can write about that as well. I know some people ask, okay, if I can't use this or that, or I can't write about my sports injury or my grandparent or this, what do I write about? So those are some ideas that you definitely um, can write about or share that, that really, again, shows you your character. And again, you're not gonna fit every single college campus and that's okay. So when you're picking or selecting your college list or the colleges that or universities you want to attend, if you do your research, you're going to find schools that are going to fit you and what your purpose is. And those are the ones that you need to apply to. And it's okay that you don't fit 
with every school. You, you won't, you're not supposed to, right? It'll make you a chameleon. <laughs> you're supposed to find the ones that fit you where other students and you are gonna thrive as we keep saying this big thrive on that campus. But that's what the college admissions per person and, and, and the, the process they're looking for, like kids that are gonna do something on their campus. And then once they leave, schools wanna brag about you. They wanna say that kid who is in the Library of Congress or the film producer or the engineer at the big company, they went to our school. So finding those schools is gonna help nurture that career path and fit your intellect as well as your social aspect of your life. Those are the schools that you need to apply to. And do we have questions? We do. Um, let's see, we've got- Yes, we have one question about supplemental essays. Yes. Anyone else has questions, you can put them here in the chat or in the Q&A box. We've got like nine minutes, so we've got some time. So I think what are supplemental essays is a question? Yep. Okay. Yep. So supplemental essays are those shorter school specific essays that Patrice talked about earlier, the different prompts, including the why us essay. That's one of the big supplemental essays. <laughs> And you'll see them as you're going through the application, like if you're in Common App or Coalition App, it'll tell you each school's writing requirements, and you will see those questions there. Some of them have, you know, one question, two questions that are speak a little bit more in general about their institution, and they can be as crazy as the one you saw about in the samples that we were giving you. Like UChicago, just a school of point of reference, has the most crazy outlandish questions for students to answer. And it's because they want you to think, you know what I mean? Like, well, how are you gonna answer this crazy question? <laughs> so there will be questions like that um, throughout the process um, for whatever application you are. Some don't have them. Um, some just take the Common App or the regular essay, the, um, the, sub, the Common App essay or Coalition essay. So you don't have to worry about it, but every school will have their written requirements. So you just make sure you guys are paying attention to that. And I also just got a question about if this was recorded. It was recorded. And so we'll be able to actually um, share this with you all. We have a number of um, essay webinars, so happy to share them. I know Any there's other a questions? Question. <laughs> Yeah. If Maybe you don't have did any... such a great job and they don't have any questions for us, yeah. Shannon. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. I, I think it was I think it was good. Um, but if you do have questions, right? Like we said, our emails were there earlier in the PowerPoint, but we're also happy to answer questions while we're here. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a question. You mentioned to avoid overused topics because some of these not be as overused for students of color. Um, that's a, a, a good question. So it, it doesn't matter. I think um, no matter, you know, if you're a student of color, if you're a first gen student, you know, just tell your story. So whatever story it is, that's you can choose that topic or whatever, you know, if you have you know, something compelling, if it, it doesn't really matter. Um, just tell it well, like, just like I said, like you could use those topics, like maybe, you know, something like a, there's a lot of students that came to this country and in a, a very compelling way. And it, it speaks to them and how they've grown and developed and matured into the young men or women that they are now and the struggle that they had, like you, whatever it is, make sure that it's just a well-written essay um, and it tells who you are and then how you're going to fit on that campus, right? So it can be, it doesn't matter, you know, color, it doesn't matter gender, it doesn't matter whatever your story is. Um, if you're choosing the topic that you can write about anything, just make sure that that is, is a very well-written essay that speaks to your character, your personality, um, and helps you uh, highlight your strengths, um, highlight your leadership, your, your responsibility, all of that. So, um, yes. Um, and then, oh, 
I guess this was a lot more than expected. Thanks, you're welcome. Um, thank you. Could you go back to why this school, I missed one of the three points you made. Why this school? Oh, was this for the supplemental essays, Cassandra? Oh, the, um, yes, okay. Yes, so I was speaking about um, like when you're doing the, the why Tulane question or why Duke or why Maryland, um, you need to make sure that no other school fits into that category because there's no school that's alike, right? There's similarities in a lot of schools, but what helps you decide and bring out why I wanna attend this university. They don't wanna know, you know, they're number one in business or number one in engineering, or they have the best art program or the best theater. They know all of that, right? What is it, what else about that school makes you a good fit, right? And it, it can be the, like maybe you wanna go be a, a Google representative or Bank of America. And one of the professors actually is an employer of Bank of America and they're teaching the, the business or economics class 101 like and he doesn't teach anywhere else in the country and he's a CEO I don't know whatever it is like maybe that's why you want to go to that school because their their professors or faculty are more than just adjunct they're actually there and they've been there a long time and they know their students maybe the professors are accessible maybe um, their the way they learn but also students students have to keep in mind that how you learn best Colleges have, you know, small lectures, they have, you know, experiential learning, they have project-based learning. So figuring out why that school is going to be a fit for you, because they really, they, it's, it's like they can't intertwine, they don't intertwine. So they all do something well, they all have their purpose, they all have their different students. They all have their mission, their community. So making sure that you're looking at all of that. I suggest students to read the school newspaper at the institutions, they are published online because that are the voices of the students. It's gonna tell you the good, the bad, the ugly of the university, what they're doing well, what new buildings they have coming through the pipeline, what their students are doing, if professors are doing their job, if they're learning well. So think about like if you're in high school and what your school newspaper does for your, your high school, it's the same thing in college. Those are the voices of the community and the students there. So see if that fits what you're looking for. That's such a great tip, Patrice. I love that idea. That's great because the, you know, telling students to just go research can be overwhelming. So giving them the school newspaper specifically, that's a great tip. Y'all, that was a million dollar tip that you just got from Patrice. It's a great tip. Yeah. Says, is it ever too early to start an essay? My son is a rising sophomore. Shannon, you can take that one. Yeah, so <laughs> that can be a little early um, just because I imagine that there's so much more growing for your son to do. So by the time students get to the end of their junior year, they write that they've had three solid years of high school to really reflect. Um, so what could be good though is journaling, um, and beginning that resume early, right? So keeping track of all the things that he's doing, right? Athletics, any awards he's receiving, any uh, extracurricular activities he's involved in, service, anything he might do outside of school. So at least keeping track of those things so that when it's time to come back to the college essay, he can reflect on some of those pieces and begin to, to think about how he's grown through the years. So it might be a little early to start the essay, but it's not too early to begin documenting what he's learning um, throughout high school. And like, thank you for being here for your rising sophomore son. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> And then also like I have students like and I, I get the whole like um, I think the college process begins in the ninth grade because you want to start taking classes that you're you know thinking about things that you want to possibly major and sometimes you have no idea I have seniors that had no idea what they wanted to major in and that's fine but let's say your student knows I want to be you know, a doctor, I want to be an architect or whatever it is. And that school has those courses that can gear him in that right direction. He can start kind of thinking, or she, he or she, my son, he said son, um, can start thinking about some of the courses that they're going to take. And then just being a, a great like sophomore and doing extracurricular activities and doing community service and, and finding out, you know, kind of his niche, 
that should be also something to be considered, especially you know freshmen and sophomores. They're they're coming from middle school, coming in that first year of high school, and if he's a rising sophomore, his freshman year was spent over a a, a computer. So just trying to fit in and 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 find new friendships and figure out what clubs and activities he's going to be a part of and doing well in his academics is going to be key for right now. And then if he knows like what he wants to be, he can start taking those classes. And as he's moving into his junior year and senior year, all of that comes to fruition. So having him get settled into what he wants to do, what, you know, if he wants to be an athlete, if he wants to do X, Y, and Z, if he wants to, you know, I don't know if you can have a job right now at this age, I have no idea, but have him discover him is going to be most important right now. And then it will help guide him through the college process later on in, in the years. Awesome. And such great discussion here at the end. We are at 801. Um, so we want to honor everyone's time. Thank you all so, so much for spending time with us. And again, if you are interested in doing a meet and greet with one of our essay specialists to begin this process for our rising seniors, um, please be sure to shoot us an email. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you guys. Bye.